congratulations, guys. Thank for, you. Uh, for, Thank you. For doing this. How, how does it feel to be this permanent part of the, the My Hero Academia world universe now? <laughs> it is so special. It is so special. I mean, I, I think all three of us feel very similarly in that it is, it's something that's dear to our hearts and something we all enjoy and have enjoyed for a long time. And on this scale, it's, it's really unique. So I think this is, this is just a gift. I've never seen it. Is it a big show? Do people like it? I'm <laughs> confused. Uh, no, I'm super stoked. Come on. It's a massive show with a wonderful following. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to be a part of it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm also just excited to see the movie. Let's go. I haven't seen the full thing yet. What a treat. I, I always knew it was a big show, but I think it's just starting to sink in now. It's like, oh, this is a big, big show. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still very much processing all of this. You know, it's it's definitely like it's it hasn't fully registered, which is probably for the better, like for my own mental health. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Robbie, how 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 do you approach a character, this villain? Because he almost seems like he had a reasonable goal. Sure. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough to empathize with someone with uh, with ill intentions. But if you're a good villain and it's well written, which thankfully this is, uh, you just approach them that you would any other person. Uh, you don't think of them as a villain. At least that's how I play villains. I, I look at their internal motivations, how they express them to the out outside world, what masks they might wear in public. And uh, fortunately, Fleck has all of those things going for him as a well written uh, villain. So um, whether you empathize with him or not is up to you. That's not my choice. Uh, I just I just say what he says and see how you feel about it. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, your uh, your character your character Rody here, I I almost want to say he's a, probably like almost the closest thing to a normal human but not quite. But uh could you talk more about uh, him because he, he's a major uh, cog in this in this film. Well, that's actually my favorite thing to kind of touch on about him because in general, the, to me, the most special thing about this entire franchise is that it makes people realize that they can be a hero, you know, on whatever scale. And I think Rhodey represents that so purely of, you know, you do not have to be, you know, Deku. You know, you don't have to be that side of things to, mm. to do things that are extraordinary on whatever scale that may seem. And I, I hope that when people see this film, that's the message that they take away from it because it really is like, it's it's refreshing to be able to be a human, you know, to to, to some degree in this, in a, you know, in a, a plain way in a very extraordinary world. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of the time we as people feel sometimes like the world is so big and, and outlandish and, and we don't know exactly how to fit into it. So that connection is so visceral to me. Christina, yeah. you are the you're the, you're the biggest tiniest hero in this uh, <laughs> film. How many how many ways you could actually chirp and uh, oh my and, gosh! And how how relief it was that you you actually I want to say say something in this film. Mm -hmm. Um, I how I'm sorry. How what? How you say that something you, that you actually said something. <laughs> Yes, um, you know, I think it was it was so much fun uh, getting to play a creature role. Uh, that's something that um, was kind of a surprise turn in my career. <laughs> um, <laughs> getting to I play so many creatures, um, and it's always so a good challenge. At it. <laughs> Thank you. It's always a challenge to um, because you know I want to make sure that every every chirp, every squawk has an intent, and that the audience is able to know. Um, you know, not just making silly sounds like he's he's has something to say. So I'm glad it translates. I, I want to touch on that just super quick because Christina had recorded, I think, almost all of Pino, if not all of Pino, before I got to record. And I got to play off of all those chirps and, and all the sounds. And it was it was like we were having a conversation. So yeah, it was very, very clear. It's it's in the performance and it's it's all heart. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for carrying this conversation. It's all it's all heart in this conversation too. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank Thanks, you. Dick.